production to Apache HVAC, IES's detailed HVAC plant and controls modeling tool. Once you've created the detailed HVAC system, you can then simulate it using Apache SIM and review the results in Vista Pro in terms of room conditions, building energy consumption, and building carbon dioxide emissions. In Vista Pro, you can also look at the performance of your individual HVAC components in detail. Apache HVAC is also used as the plant modeling interface for IES's ASHRAE 90.1 PRM navigator. We'll go to Apache HVAC and load up a system that's already been created. Apache HVAC uses a flexible schematic component based approach that enables you to quickly assemble HVAC plants and control systems. Apache HVAC is dynamically integrated with Apache SIM, our thermal analysis tool. This is vital in providing a building integrated approach where the HVAC system and building are assessed as a whole, allowing all gains and losses, heat transfer and thermal mass in the building to be accounted for alongside system performance. A typical HVAC system comprises of air paths, components, and controls. Apache HVAC has two modes. Airside mode, where we create the HVAC schematic with all the controls and components, and waterside mode, where we define hot water loops and chilled water loops. By default, we're in airside mode. One way of switching to waterside mode is to click on the hot water loops button or the chilled water loops button. Let's click on the hot water loops icon. We're now taken to waterside mode. Here you can see a hot water loop which has already been created. If you want to go back to airside mode, simply click this icon again. Let's start from the beginning and create a new Apache HVAC system. And save it here. The HVAC network is a file with the extension ASP and is stored in the main project folder. To draw the network path, we use these tools here. To define a room in the network, we use this icon here. We can then select a room from our model. To define airflow in the system, we use controls. The most common controls are independent time switches and independent controllers with sensors. In this example, we'll control the flow using a simple independent time switch. Click once to define the control point in the system and click a second time to define the control box symbol. The control dialog will then appear and we can enter some details. We'll select flow rate as the control variable and the maximum flow here. We'll control the flow rate using a time switch profile by clicking this select icon. And here are all the profiles in your project. If you wish to place a fan in the system, you can use these icons here.
Notes, the fan symbol does not define the flow in the system. The flow in the system is defined by this control. The fan in the system is used to define the electricity consumption of the fan. To condition the air in the system, we can use heating coils or cooling coils and insert them in the system. Generally, before placing these coils, we need to define sources of heating energy and cooling energy. Typically, this will be done by clicking the hot water loops icon or the chill water loops icon. This will take us to water side mode. We'll click on the hot water loops icon. To create a new hot water loop, click this icon here. You now see the hot water loop dialog box. You can define the hot water loop data here and the heating equipment, such as boilers, here. To add or edit equipment, just use these buttons here. Then we can select a boiler curve here and enter the rated condition in these boxes here, such as the heating capacity. Boilers can be sequenced if required using these checkboxes here. Once we've created the system, it will appear as a schematic in waterside mode. In a similar way, we can create chilled water loops. Here is the chilled water loop data. And here is the equipment, such as electric water cool chillers or electric air cool chillers. Again, we can select the curve and the rated outputs of the chiller and the rated COP. Again, Chillers can be sequenced by using these checkboxes here. To return to airside mode, simply click on the chill water loops button again, and we now return to airside mode. Now we've created hot water loops and chill water loops, we can then place heating coils and cooling coils. To do this, we use these icons here. Let's place a heating coil. Choose a type of coil. In this example, we'll select a simple model. And then we can then choose the hot water loop, which will supply this coil. Here you enter the coil capacity. In the same way, we'll place a cooling coil. and we'll choose the chilled water loop to supply this coil. And we enter the coil capacity here. In Apache HVAC, having placed components such as coils, you must then operate them by using controls. Controls must be placed downstream of the component. In this example, we're going to control the operation of the heater coil by using an independent time switch control. In this example, we're going to control the operation of the heater coil by using an independent time switch control.
we will control dry bulb temperature. We enter the required off-coil dry bulb temperature and when the control operates by using a profile. This means that the heating coil will operate to achieve the required 15 degrees centigrade downstream of the heating coil. Of course, this is subject to the heating coil capacity and to the capacity of the hot water loop that supplies it. It's also, again, subject to the temperature before the coil. In the same way, we can place a similar control downstream of the cooling coil. In our example, this means that the air is supplied into the room at between 15 and 16 degrees, as long as the coils are big enough and as long as the sources of heat and cooling supplying these coils is adequate. Next, we're going to look at an example of a controller with a sensor. Let's open up a different network. Here we have a partially completed example of two coils supplying air at a fixed temperature into a space. We're going to place a control to vary the flow rate to keep the room to a desired set point. To do this, we're going to use a independent controller with a sensor. Click once to define the control points, the second click to define the control box symbol, and the final click to define the sensor position. We're going to place the sense position downstream of the room. The controller dialog box will open. We're going to use proportional control in this example. The control variable will be flow rate. The sensed variable will be dry bulb temperature in the room. The control will operate on a 7 to 7 profile. Here we will enter the mid band, i.e., the set point, and the bandwidth. You can see the graph updating here. At the maximum sense dry bulb temperature, which is at the top of the band, in this example 25 degrees, we'll enter the required flow rates. This example is a cooling system, so from our design calculations we know we have a flow rate requirement of 2,000 litres per second. At the bottom end of the band, we'll set the required flow rates when the room is at 23 degrees or below, a minimum sense dry bulb temperature. In this example, we'll enter a flow rate of 200 litres per second. So now the flow will vary between 200 and 2,000 litres per second, depending on the temperature in the zone. Of course, if the flow rate isn't adequate for the air supply temperature, then you may not keep the room within the required band. In a similar way, you could use a proportional control to control the off-call temperature from a coil to keep the room within a desired temperature range. We'll load up an example of this. This proportional control here is controlling the operation of the cooling coil. If we double click the control, you can see that it's controlling off coil temperature and it's sensing room temperature. So when the room is at 23 or above, we are asking for the cooling coil to provide 15 degrees downstream of it. As the room temperature decreases, the required off coil temperature from the cooling coil will increase in this example up to a maximum of 25. So you can see that this will vary the output of the cooling coil depending on the room temperature. 
Next we'll load up an example of a fan coil system. Here are the air handling unit coils, supplying the fresh air using this control. And here are the fan coil coils. Each of these coils has proportional control downstream of it, sensing the room temperature and controlling the operation of the coil. So there's one for the cooling coil and one for the heating coil. We'll have a quick look at the control for the heating coil. You can see when the room is cold, the required off cold temperature from the heating coil is 28 degrees. As the room temperature increases, the output of the heating coil will decrease. In Apache HVAC, it's possible to have more than one control controlling the operation of the component, but sensing different variables. Controls can even be linked together using OR or AND connections using these icons up here. In practice, when you're using Apache HVAC, off coil temperatures, coil sizes, room set points, boiler and chiller sizes will have been already derived from load calculations or design requirements. These requirements are entered when creating the Apache HVAC network, and then the network is then simulated using Apache SIM. And we then see how the system performs by looking at the results of Vista Pro. Currently, we have the fresh air system and the fan coil unit supplying a single zone, which in this example is the L-shaped room. If you wish the same system to supply a large number of rooms, one option would be to take the section here and make multiple copies. However, you would find that the drawing canvas would become cluttered very quickly and hard to decipher. A much better way is to use the multiplexing feature. To create a multiplex, use this icon up here and drag the multiplex from bottom left to top right. This is the multiplex dialog. The multiplex allows you to add rooms either individually here or using room groups here. Click on OK and the multiplex is now created. You can then edit any item in the multiplex, which will then apply to all the rooms in the multiplex. For example, we'll edit the fresh air flow rate here. If you click on the flow rate button, you can view or edit the flow rates for all the rooms in the multiplex very quickly. We'll edit the cooling coil in the multiplex and we can set the capacity here for individual zones. We're now going to simulate this example system using Apache SIM. We need to move to the Apache view. We'll click on the Apache SIM button and we'll make sure that the link to Apache HVAC is enabled. We can then select the appropriate Apache HVAC ASP file. So we'll do the simulation for the whole year. When the simulation is finished, we're now taken to Vista Pro, where we can view the results. Let's look at room temperature in the L-shaped room. So we'll select room results, select the L-shaped room, Select air temperature and we'll look at the results for this week in August. Let's create a graph. You can see the temperature in the room is being controlled to the set point 
from Monday to Friday during operating hours. Next we'll look at building energy consumption for the whole year. Let's select the whole year and click on energy. In the list of energy variables, you can now see a lot of items related to Apache HVAC. For example, we'll look at Apache HVAC boilers energy and Apache HVAC chillers energy. And we'll click on the monthly totals button to see the energy consumption of our Apache HVAC boilers and chillers for the year. Here is the energy from the Apache HVAC distribution fans. We can see the energy from the Apache HVAC distribution pumps. Here's the total system energy for the building. In the same way, we can look at carbon dioxide emissions. We can see the total system carbon emissions. In Vista Pro, you can interrogate the performance of the HVAC system, including its components. For example, we look at the chiller. We look at the chiller's energy consumption for the whole year. In Vista Pro, you can interrogate the conditions at any point in the HVAC network. For example, if you look at node 3, you can interrogate the air temperature or the mass flow rates. Let's look at the air temperature at node 3 downstream of the heating coil in February. This is very useful if you need to do some troubleshooting. In Apache HVAC, a library of ready-made systems is available. This is called the prototype library. To access this library, we click this icon up here. Most of the systems in the library are ASHRAE based. We have ASHRAE baseline systems here. And here we have variations on these baseline systems. As an example, we'll select system 9A. A description of the system is available down here. Let's import it into Apache HVAC. It's now placed within the canvas. When you import a prototype system into Apache HVAC, by default a whole range of ready-made hot water loops and chilled water loops are brought in as well. Here's a list of the hot water loops brought in. DX cooling units are also imported. In Apache HVAC, it's possible to import more than one system. For example, for a multi story building, you could have a different system for each floor. The prototype library is an integral part of the ASHRAE 90.1 PRM navigator. If you're using the PRM Navigator, you'll need to import these prototype systems. When you import a system, you can see that a multiplex is already available. We'll edit the multiplex and bring some rooms into it from our model. We'll save this network file. You 
You could then use this network in a dynamic simulation. As mentioned before, flow rates, coil sizes, plant sizes, and set points can be entered manually in the HVAC system. However, this can be time consuming, especially for large buildings with many rooms. In Apache HVAC, the auto sizing feature greatly speeds up this process. Auto sizing consists of two stages. In the first stage, ASHRAE room and zone level sizing calculations are performed to calculate flow rates. The network is then populated with these flow rates. In the second stage, ASHRAE system equipment and plant sizing calculations are performed to calculate coil sizes and plant sizes such as boiler capacities and chiller capacities. The coils and the plants within the network are then populated with these sizes. Once all the data is in the HVAC network, the network can then be dynamically simulated using Apache SIM, and the performance of the system can be analysed. We will demonstrate auto sizing on this system. The Edit System Schedules option allows you to rapidly edit schedules and set points and assign them to the network. Next, we're going to open the System Parameters dialog. The System Parameters dialog is a powerful tool which allows you to view and edit the system and zone data before and after the ASHRAE load calculations. Data can be edited for the primary air supply and individual zones. A tabular edit feature is available for the zones. The first stage of auto sizing will perform the ASHRAE room and zone level sizing calculations by clicking on this icon here. The ASHRAE Lowe's dialog box will appear. We'll perform the calculations. Once the load calculations are complete, we'll return to the System Parameters dialog. In this tab, you can see the calculated loads in green for the selected room. At the bottom of this tab, you can see the required flow rates for cooling and heating. You can see the flows in more detail in this tab. By clicking on Assign and Exit, we'll assign all the flow rates to all the zones in the HVAC network. If we double click a control in the HVAC network, you can see the auto size flow rates in green. Here you can see the flow rates calculated for individual zones. We'll now perform the second stage of auto sizing, which is the ASHRAE system equipment and plant sizing. We use this icon up here. The ASHRAE Loads dialog box will appear, and we'll press Calculate to start the process. If we now select a cooling coil, for example, in the HVAC network, you can see the auto size values in green. Do the same for a heating coil, and also a coil for the air handling unit. Let's look at a boiler or a chiller. Go to the hot water loops. 
you double click a boiler and you can see the auto size heating capacity. Let's do the same for a chiller. Here you can see the auto size capacity of the chiller. The auto sizing process is now complete. We can now dynamically simulate this network in Apache Sim and see how the system performs. This concludes the introduction to Apache HVAC.